Okay, so diving into um, integration techniques, and this is actually a technique to estimate um, values when given a differential equation, uh, we're going to see how to do Euler's method. So what is Euler's method? Well, Euler's method is a way to estimate functions or function values given a differential equation and an, an initial value. So why do we need it? Well, uh, if the differential equation is relatively easily solvable, then um, I don't really need it. I can just come up with a solution again, actual value. But um, for differential equations that are hard, or impossible, to solve, we can use Euler's method to come up with a quick estimate. And here's how Euler's method works. So um, what we're going to end up doing is we will use the differential equation to find a linear approximation, a tangent line or something like that. Then we will take a horizontal step and uh, estimate the new value. And we're going to repeat until we get to our target x. So it's just like linear approximations or estimating using a um, tangent line. But instead of just taking one big step and getting to our answer, we're going to make a bunch of tangent lines and work our way towards the curve. So let's look at an example. I'll solve this numerically, and then I'll jump over and show, well, I'll estimate it numerically, and I'll jump over to show it um, graphically, and then I'll show you a little shortcut for it. So here's the idea. I want to estimate the value of y of 2, given six equal steps, I know I'm starting at negative one. So something I oftentimes like to do is figure out what x values I'm going to be using. So I'm going to notate things this way. And I will start at negative one. And if I want to get to two in six steps, I know that the overall interval is two minus negative one which is going to be 3 wide. And if I take 6 equal steps, I'll divide that by 6. And each step, each delta x, is going to be 1 half. Now, I like the delta x notation. In the references I saw when I was coming up with this, they oftentimes called this the variable h as you sort of step size. So if I'm taking a step size of 1 half, my first x is going to be negative 1, then negative 1 half then 0, then 1 half, 1, 3 halves, and 2. And we know that we're starting at negative 1, 1. And dy dx, in this case, is x plus y. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And so my first tangent line, my first linear approximation, will be 0 
x plus 1 plus 1, which means that when I take my first step to the right, what's going to happen is, sorry, I'm going to go to negative 1 half now, and that evaluate negative 1 half, negative 1 half plus 1 is 1 half times 0, 0, plus 1 is 1, so I knew y value is going to still be 1. Now let me show you graphically what just happened. So in here, let me turn that off for a second, we're starting off here at negative 1, 1, we made ourselves a tangent line, we took a step on this tangent line right one half step and got to our new point. That's what we've done so far. I apologize and I had ahead of time for all the clicking. All right, so now I go through and do the process again. So I'll, I'll try to alternate colors so you can sort of see what's connected. So to get dy dx, I add x plus y and I get one half here. Sorry, that's a really bad job of changing colors. Let me actually change colors this time. And so my second linear approximation is going to be 1 half x plus 1 half plus 1. And I'm going to take another step and evaluate that line at 0. So L2 of 0. And when I evaluate that, I will get, so 0 plus 1 half is 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, plus 1 is 5 fourths. So that gives me the point 0, 5 fourths. And then I flip back over to the graph. So I made my second tangent line, took a step right, half of a unit, and connected it up. And so now I'm looking at this. And I continue. So I make my third tangent line, and I'm doing a really bad job of changing colors still. So third tangent line, um, 0 plus 5 fourths gives me a slope of 5 fourths, so I have 5 over 4, x minus 0, plus the y value of 5 fourths, and I evaluate this at my next step down of 1 half, so L3 of 1 half, 1 half minus 0 is 1 half, times 5 fourths is 5 eighths, plus 5 fourths, which is going to be the same thing as 10 eighths, gives me 15 over 8. And back to the graph to see what we just did, so we created a third tangent line, we took a step to the right 1 half unit, and got that. And we continue. Let me see if I can actually change colors. Nope. There we go. All right. So um, I add these together to get my new slope. 1 half plus 15 eighths gives me 19 over 8. And so my fourth linear approximation is 19 over 8. X minus 1 half plus 15 over 8, and I use this to evaluate the next half step up, so my fourth linear approximation evaluated at 1, 1 minus 1 half is a half, times 19 over 8 is 19 over 16, plus 15 over 8, which is 30 over 16, gets me 49 over 16. And back to the graph, so we got a tangent line, we took a step right one half unit and connected it up. Okay, same thing. Add one, add the x and the y. That should give me, let's see, 16 plus 49 gives me um, 65. So I get 65 over 16. Take the fifth linear approximation, which is 65 over 16, x minus 1 plus 49 over 16, and 
I'm going to evaluate that uh, at the next step up, which is 3 halves. And that will give me 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half times 65 over 16 and 65 over 32, plus 49 over 16, which is the same thing as 98 over 16, gives me, let me see, 163 over 32. I couldn't read my scratch work. Sorry about that. Let me put these and I forgot to write the value here as well. So 15 over 8. We have 163 over 32. And over here I had 49 over 16. So I go back to my graph to see what I just did. Make another tangent line. Go a half step to the right. Connect them up. And we get there. And I've taken one, two, three, four, five. I have one more step to take. And so, same thing, my sixth linear approximation is going to be, I add these together, and when I add them together, I get 211 over 32. So my slope is 211 divided by 32, x minus 3 halves plus 163 over 32. And I evaluate this at my next half step up, which is 2, and I get from there 537 over 64. So I put that there, 537 over 64. That is my approximation, because I've taken my six steps with my six tangent lines. And graphically, let me see what that looks like. So, tangent line, half step to the right, oops, half step to the right, connect it up, and I get this. Now, uh, this differential equation in AP calculus, you probably will not see how to solve it. When you get into differential equations in college, you will definitely see how to solve this. So, the solution to that differential equation is this function right here, and you sort of see, okay, it's not perfect, but it's generally following the same trend. If I wanted a better approximation, I'd take more steps, which would be smaller steps. If I want a worse but faster to get approximation, I would take larger steps. Um, so if I had some more, it'd curve up better, because the problem is that these are still taking um, linear steps, while in this case this green function is actually curving and curving away from each line. Now that's the way I like showing this, but there is actually a little shortcut to clean up on some of this notation. So I'll show that. Uh, if you're good with this, feel free to just stop the video now, or um, whenever you get what I'm doing, feel free to stop later. I will finish that example all out all over again, but it's probably a waste of your time after a point. So the shortcut is this. Instead of finding the whole linear, or I'll say tangent line, we know that y of x sub n plus 1, so the next y value is going to be whatever my current y value is, plus that delta x, which I'm going to put as h, that change in x, times the slope. the nth slope, so um, whatever we had there. So instead of having to actually make the whole linear approximation, I can just take my previous y value and add on the slope times the step. So I'll show how that works. Uh, it'll be a little bit less writing. Feel free to stop the video or skip to the very end when you get it, but it is worth understanding. So same process, I see that the overall, the whole step size is 6 to go from negative 1 to 2, sorry, 
3 to go from negative 1 to 2. I take 6 steps, so each step is going to be 1 half. I like calling that delta x, but a lot of the references call it h. I'll call it h so that your math book will probably call it the same thing. So I start at negative 1, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half, 1, 3 halves, 2. The first y value is 1. And so to get dy dx, I do negative 1 plus 1, and that gives me 0. I take my y value, so let me say, okay, that was y um, 0, let's call this y 1, is going to be y 0 plus 1 half times this, okay, times the slope. Um, y 0 is 1, 1 half times 0 is 1, so I get all right, I'm sorry, 1 half times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, and I do the same thing. So that's y1, so y2 is going to be y1, plus, when I add these together, I get 1 half as my slope, so plus 1 half for the change, times 1 half for the slope, 1 half plus 1, times 1 half is 1 fourth, plus 1 is 5 fourths. And I just continue this process, my third well, sorry, I add these together, get 5 fourths as my slope, and my third y value is going to be my second y value, 5 fourths, plus the step size, times the slope, multiplies through 5 fourths times 1 half is 5 eighths, plus 5 fourths, which is 10 eighths, gives me 15 eighths, and I find my next slope, 1 half plus 5 eighths is 19 eighths, I'm starting to memorize these numbers. So y4 is going to be this y value, 15 eighths, plus the step size times the slope. 1 half times 19 eighths is 19 sixteenths. 15 eighths is 30 sixteenths. 30 plus 19 gives me 49 sixteenths as my new y value. And then I add these together and get 65 over 16. So my fifth y value is going to be this y value, 49 over 16, plus the step size times the slope. Half of 65 over 16 is 65 over 32. 49 over 16 is the same as 98 over 32. Add it on, and I should get um, 163 over 32. Add these together, and I get 211 over 32 as my new slope. And my last y value, the one I'm going after, is going to be the previous y value plus the step size times the slope. Half of 211 over 32 is 211 over 64. 163 over 32 is the same as 200 and, oh, sorry, 326 over 32. Add them up, and I get 537 over, sorry, 64, I might have said 32 there. Okay, and that is the final answer with a little bit less work. Still a lot of work, but a little bit less. Feel free to comment below with any questions, and uh, tomorrow or the next day I'll try to come up with a video of a few different practice problems, maybe some that are a little bit faster without all the fractions.